what's up guys? Jordan here at Controlled Interest and today we are taking a look back at a wonderful game called Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom I'm Hearts. I'm joined by Dom. Kingdom Hearts. Now, you may be wondering what that means. I think we'll get into that in just a minute because uh, I'll be honest, you know, Kingdom Hearts is a very confusing and uh, just overly complicated series overly uh it was melodramatic i would say but um we'll dig down deep into that in a second uh first i got a little stat sheet for you right here kingdom hearts was released in 2002 first in japan a few months later in the fall here in north america and it was developed by squaresoft now um it was i think published by Square Enix but developed by Squaresoft which is odd because that was right at the tail end when they had uh, just combined and or were just about to combine at least and uh, this would have been I'm sure this has got to be the last game that's you know got the Squaresoft name on the cover and all that so um, now I'm sure the people on that team if they're still there have just been absorbed into you know Square Enix internal teams and um, absolutely sure that they're still working on Kingdom Hearts games, but um, very interesting that that uh, little tidbit about Squaresoft. So Jordan, let's let's jump back. Someone who has no idea what this game is, give a, you know, a 30 second synopsis of what the deal is with Kingdom Hearts. Okay, so uh, basically, and this was one of my talking points, I'm glad you brought that up, it is uh, a crossover between Square characters and Disney characters in a third-person action RPG. So um, you have, they're either characters, there's NPCs that are characters from Final Fantasy games, um, and there are characters that are basically just designed in the square uh, look and the uh, aesthetic, I guess you would say. So essentially, the Kingdom Hearts characters that are original Kingdom Hearts characters look like they could be uh, ripped out of Final Fantasy, essentially. Um, so you play as this boy named Sora, and he lives on this island with his friends Riku and Kairi. And they are just little kids at first, and you're, you start the game just playing around and um, hitting each other with sticks and running races with Riku and stuff like that. But then eventually what happens is this giant um, dark energy monster um, comes through at night and you have this boss battle where uh, your keyblade materializes in your hand and that is a big part of the series. So I guess I'll kind of go ahead and get into what the yeah, name Kingdom what, Hearts what is a king, means. What, what is a keyblade too? What? So Kingdom Hearts is basically a... It's the hearts of all the worlds combined is the best way to put it, right? So The Disney um, worlds, right? Th right, exactly. So you have um, these Disney worlds, and then you have like uh, Kingdom Hearts-specific worlds like Traverse Town and things like that. And this uh, Kingdom Hearts is the hearts of all those worlds combined, and so um, the Keyblade wielders are able to travel in between those worlds where no one else, normal people, wouldn't be able to. And... They're also able to kind of heal the hearts of the worlds if they've been corrupted with their keyblades. So you go on this adventure to, um, you know, help heal the hearts of these worlds essentially. And so you're visiting all these Disney uh, environments with Tarzan and classic stuff like Alice in Wonderland, which is actually one of the uh, least exciting parts of Kingdom Hearts One. Really, but... I, I was gonna say I like that level probably more than any of the others. The Alice in Wonderland level was fantastic. Huh? Yeah, yeah most people actually complain about that because it's it's um, more boring and there's lo these long cutscenes where you're in a trial with the uh, Queen of Hearts and yeah. she's just yelling at you for stupid shit for a that long. That does time. drag. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, but you get the f the point with jumping around the Disney worlds and saving them and. Um, locking their hearts back up with your keyblade and all that so um, the lore from there I won't get too deep into that uh, because it's just it gets so so deep it's a bottomless pit really and especially with it being a crossover of two worlds and I think that's where I want to go next is the fact that it's really really cool the way they do this and when I think about it now it's kind of an a crossover of epic proportions that we would have never seen um, and it's I'm still amazed that 
not only it happened, that it's continued happening, and that we're going to be getting Kingdom Hearts um, hopefully sometime in my life. So, yeah, let me, yeah, I, I want to talk. I want to discuss that with you, Dom. Just how crazy the fact that you know one of the biggest video game franchises with Final Fantasy, and obviously um, one of the biggest just entertainment franchises ever, being Disney, combine and do this epic crossover basically that, that's just what i was gonna say is that what that's what makes this game most remarkable obviously is um yeah that that you're bringing these disney characters with all these final fantasy characters and, and these original square enix characters um this i mean off the top of my head i'm trying to think of you know a bigger collaborative uh, feat you know or accomplishment yeah. that of yeah. any two major you know uh and in this case, they're completely separate companies, right? Where Square Enix oh, and yeah. Disney. So they're very different. Big, you know, big licensing uh, mess there, too, you can imagine. Yeah. Um, when you look at something like The Avengers um, and all those Marvel movies, obviously people look really fondly on those. But their advantage is, you know, Marvel really has control over all those pieces. So it's, yeah. that's an advantage. But that's what makes uh, Kingdom Hearts so impressive. And then, of course... Um, it's it brought two different crowds into one game so you know you have your your final fantasy fans who had just gotten some of the later final fantasy games i think 10 or yeah 10 was right around i think 10 was right before kingdom hearts yeah so not too far from then then so obviously there's a huge fan base for final fantasy and then there's a huge other fan base of i mean frankly just disney and casual video game people players (laughs) um yeah which was me at the time right i didn't know anything about final fantasy um so jumping into Kingdom Hearts, um, mostly because I, I even I even learned things about the other Disney worlds that I wasn't familiar with, um, yeah. as well as of course Final Fantasy stuff that I still haven't really gotten into Final Fantasy, but it was cool to bring that together and it, it is a mar- like a crazy marriage that it, it still kind of blows my mind that it happened. And on top yeah. of all that, the the gameplay and the systems and although it's complicated and deep, the story were all really good too. Um, yeah, and I think that's the next point is the fact yeah. that not only do we have this crazy epic crossover, not only do we have these two vastly different um, other side of the globe companies mm-hmm. working together um, and bringing their giant properties together in a way that we don't ever really see, but on top of all that, it was a really great game, had great critical reception. Um, it definitely wasn't as well received as some of the later games in the series. Um, sits at a 85 right now on Metacritic, which obviously I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. But uh, um, you know, it's it really is a feat that that they were able to pull this off and have been pulling it off. Um, I think the reason that they've been so long and drawn out, and we've had so many spinoffs on different consoles, is just because um, you know Square internal development studio works on Final Fantasy games, right? And obviously mm-hmm. we've seen how long it took them just to get Final Fantasy 15 out, which was versus 13 at one point. So, you know, they're, it's kind of a tangled mess, I think. I think Square Enix is um, not in the best spot that it's ever been as far as the way that it's per- currently being managed, but I think they are working to make that better, and they are working on the games we want them to work on. I mean, Final Fantasy VII Remake is really kind of even crazier than Kingdom Hearts happening. So I'm for the, looking towards the future, you know, we talk about the um, all the crazy different characters and I definitely think we're going to see um, Marvel and Star Wars in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. I think yeah. you're absolutely going to be able to swing a, a lightsaber keyblade, lightsaber keyblade and um, I'm really excited for that. But as far as the original game goes, um, you were kind of mentioning the gameplay and that's another really cool thing because you know square they're at up until this point really known for making these turn blade turn based um rpgs and this is a third person action rpg where you're actually swinging uh your keyblade your sword as sora and you're actually um you know throwing spells at people and it's it's all real time and you do uh they do keep the party system uh, from Final oh, yeah. Fantasy games, right? Except yep. the twist here is, of course, your party members are, um, for the most part, Donald and Goofy, right? Um, yes. But then, if I'm remembering correctly, you switch in um, 
different NPCs that you pick up along your, your journey, right? So Yes, so it is a full-on RPG, which is the great part about Kingdom Hearts. It's absolutely an RPG, but it also is a great little third-person action game Man, on and then, top of that. Then you even get some special abilities, you know, where you call up on a like genie in a bottle um right can't remember exactly what his his attack was but it was you know something that you could the, only use every um, so often or uh the uh, links the, what are they called they're called they, so you have these links right and first of all you mentioned that you have added party members so like when you're in mulan's level then mulan is uh helping you fight the right. heartless or aladdin um, or tarzan etc right but then what you're mentioning now those are links and like i said they're they're called something different in every game but i can't remember what exactly they were called but in the original they're basically where you can it's like a magical power that i think it was just summons maybe no that's final fantasy um (laughs) but uh basically yeah you call in a character from totally different disney world you could be in aladdin's world and call in mufasa and it's really cool they're they're a little bit overpowered, but you know it takes a while to charge up this move, and so you bring them in, and they really help you out. Um, and I mentioned that you're fighting the Heartless, so the Heartless are basically uh, your enemies in this game, and the Heartless are created from um, basically some experimentation with shadows. Um, I won't go once again. I won't go too deep into that lore aspect um, with Zay and all day. that. Exactly, but um, I guess to put it simply, there's an evil guy who's using this, excuse me, army of heartless shadows, and uh, basically, if you lose your heart, then you can become heartless yourself as uh, one of the Kingdom Hearts characters, so um, they are really a cool villain when you think about it, because uh, later on we would see nobodies, and in birth by sleep we would see unversed um, which are all cool variations of these enemies well really they're different types totally they're not heartless at all Um, but what I'm trying to say is whether it's heartless whether it's nobodies or unversed they all have such a variety of character designs um, whether it's just the little grunts or the big boss guys some big fat dudes or whatever there's um, just a lot of variety there and it keeps it fresh and it keeps it interesting because um there's different strategies to these guys and um yeah that that kind of draws me back to just the straight up combat swinging a keyblade just feels great oh yeah and the magic spells are great and um yeah the I, i i'm glad you brought up the party system because i love the fact that not only are you interacting with these disney worlds but you're getting to have these characters run alongside you and like i said also Final Fantasy characters that you may know and love if you're a fan of that series. Yeah, th- there's there's just so much to this game. Um, we could unpack it for days without even getting into that story um, and some of that lore that you mentioned. So yeah, this was one um, for me. Previously to playing this game, um, I had been big into you know a bunch of the Zelda games, but I had never really been into a, a real RPG in any. Mm you know in any legitimate sense of the word so kingdom hearts was the first you know first game where that i played with you know those deep systems where you're getting these different keyblades and all these different upgrades um and even the way you traverse between worlds in your gummy ship um yeah you can build out uh. um in the party system it just like all those rpg aspects that at this, at this point in time, uh, most of the world was already used to with Final Fantasy and such, but it was brand new to me. Um, yeah. And it was really, it was a really cool way to get introduced to some of that stuff. And now, now RPGs are most likely my favorite genre. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, they've leaked but... into every aspect of video games in one way or another. Whether it's watching my brother play the show and create his character and fill out the stats, or it's uh, Call of Duty where you're building loadouts and. Um, customizing your character with gun skins and all sorts of things um, so yeah I think that Kingdom Hearts is absolutely a um, part of that and it has a place in RPG history that most don't um, two things that I want to hit before we head out I think uh, gummy ship in a second I want to talk about that right very important 
Another thing is the music. And, oh, man, uh, yeah. How did we miss the, this? So, obviously, Final Fantasy has always been big on awesome music, and I've honestly been a Final Fantasy music fan even before I was a fan of the games, per se. But uh, Kingdom Hearts is even more special. Um, Hitara Ikaru um, is the lady who sings uh, the Kingdom Hearts theme and has the done intro. multiple themes and um, there's great remixes now that they even use in the intro cinematics and um, really cool how they harken back to the original game with their uh, updated soundtracks but this one specifically um, man I can tell just you just so cool it's been I think a decade since I played this game but thinking about it now I can hear the music from when the Beauty and the Beast world away, you don't hear me <laughs> say Please. So yeah, yeah oh, baby, one of the one of the best you. intro cinematics with that song. Simple and um, clean. That I'll always remember. But I was I wanted to say specifically, I can remember the music from the Beauty and the Beast world. I can't remember what they called it. Bastion something. Um, Hollow Bastion. Hollow Bastion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, just like I mean, the, the sadness. All have. Oh, yeah, they have distinct just themes, it. and it's very cool how they incorporate those and and. They're all memorable, I think, in one way or another. But yeah, you know, I have my favorites, and Hollow Bastion's great. Obviously, Simple and Clean, the theme is really great. Um, and that I want to connect to. Um, Kingdom Hearts was one of those games before I had a PlayStation 2 where I was always, you know, I either saw it at a friend's house or I can remember very distinctly being a young, young kid in elementary school and seeing that commercial on television where it's gameplay and it's uh, simple and clean playing in the background. I'm just like, holy shit, this game looks <laughs> cool as fuck. And it's like got, you know, these cool Final Fantasy characters and these weapons with the Keyblades and then it's uh, like this Donald awesome Duck music and with the, the, magic Disney, staff. <laughs> the Disney crossover part is really awesome. So I was uh, seeing that commercial and then seeing it at a friend's house, I remember thinking, holy crap, I have to get a PlayStation 2 to play this game. And, that's exactly what I did, so that was one of those types of games for me that definitely a system seller in a lot of ways, I would say. Um, and then last, uh, and actually maybe least, I would say we should talk a little bit about the Gummy Ship, which some people, you know, Kingdom Hearts, we didn't really talk about the fandom. It has a very strong following, and people, you know, even though the lore is very deep and confusing, people just love sussing that shit out, so... Um, there's a lot of really devoted fans in uh, the Kingdom Hearts world, but a lot of them don't really like the gummy ships because they're kind of just fucking useless. You have to spend all this time building... Well, you don't have to spend any time building it, really. You can just take the basic one and it'll do you fine, but um, there's all these ways that you can modify it and make it uh, customized to your look and uh, the style that you want and the attributes that you want. So, But it's just not really worth your time, and it's just... Yeah. Even if you spend a lot of time in it, it just doesn't look that good. So really, it's just point A to B, and then you have to do these little mini games where you're shooting um, stuff uh, in space in between planets. To, to prove your point, I remember, um, and I pointed it out earlier, how cool it was. I remember my first playthrough, you know, doing that and spending all that time collecting those pieces and customizing my ship and adding these all different these stats that you yeah, think are going to matter. Right, like you're just investing, like what now seems like so much because the in subsequent playthroughs i kind of <laughs> you get a bunch of these gummy pieces and then i'm like do i why why am i doing this it's just a right. it, it's like a loading screen essentially to get you to the next world um but you you're actually playing yeah right it, it, it's just a cheap you know star fox half yeah. level type of thing um odd they, enough you, those yeah. are those are still in the series even if they're not you know, like in Birth by Sleep, you're not in the gummy ship. You're actually, uh, it's fucking cool as shit. Your Keyblade can turn into not only armor for you, but also uh, for the characters, but also um, it turns into like a little ship uh, glider thing itself. And they're all cool as shit. They're all customized for the character. But uh, basically, it's just gummy ships where you're just, you know, defeating enemies in between worlds. So. And I tell you what, it's been, like I said, a decade since I played this game. I only played the original, albeit several times through. But yep. man, this conversation has gotten, it's got me wanting to go back and well, play through everything I missed now. Now is a great time, and this is a great way to end this for us. Now is a perfect time to get into Kingdom Hearts. 
um, if you own a PlayStation 4, you can get Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 collection, which has most of the games. And then if you find that you, it has Kingdom Hearts 1 in there uh, with the final mix, which has extra content. And then um, if you decide you really like that, then you can go down the road of Kingdom Hearts 2.8 which fills in pretty much all the gaps that would be missing from the first collection. Really all you're missing at that point is uh, the mobile game. Um, so lots of really cool lore to dig into, uh, available easily on PS4, and of course you could emulate it on PCXS, or PCSX, PCSX2. Yes, I got it right, okay. Anyways, um, you play it there, you can play it on your PS2, PS3, um, so yeah, never been a better time to get into Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 3 should be out, I think, uh, probably in 2019. It doesn't look like it's going to be out next year, but um, they're working hard on it. So uh, yeah, for controlled interest, this has been Jordan and Dom, and uh, talking a little bit about Kingdom Hearts, taking a look back, and thanks so much for watching, everybody. Peace.